Hey guys, what is going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and today I got a build video for you guys which is the Raspberry Pi NAS equipped with the e-paper display from Pi Supply called the Papyrus. So let's get started. Now this video is going to be a multiple part series where part one, which is what you're watching right now, will be the setup where we do the software sharing and the screen. Part two would be the enclosure build because I don't know how I want this to be built yet or what hard drive I'm really going to be using at the end. And then part three will be adding more features into it, maybe displaying Kodi, uh, Plex server, or I don't know, torrent, VPN, I don't know. Uh, so stuff like that I have in mind maybe a one button backup solution that's going to be it for part three as far as the build that I'm doing right now it is a Raspberry Pi 3 with the Pi Supply Papyrus e paper display 2.7 inch and I'll leave all the links in the description below and I know what you're going to say Raspberry Pi is probably not the best board to be doing this which is true I, I honestly believe that it, you can find so much better boards like either the Rock Pro 64 or the Tinker board that will destroy this on a NAS setup but these are readily available and cheap easy to get and really good development boards now the purpose of this build is basically a portable media station or portable NAS media station and I want to be able to hold a lot of my media files onto this drive as well as have a Plex media server so I could bring this over to a friend's house without having to really transfer media to their computer and see if it could go on their TV, this will be able to play it using either DLNP, DPLA, oh my God, I don't even know if I'm saying that correct. And as well as I could stream media to their computers using a Plex server, or if they really needed to, they could download it directly off this guy. And I do wanna put some redundancies like this Pi Juice on in the future, as well as put Kodi as a front end so I could actually projected with using this DLP laser projector also sold on Pi Supply which I will be doing a review on this guy very soon. The code that I'm using for the e-paper display is my own custom code. I've written that all by myself. It's actually on my GitHub right now. So if you guys have any hints on how to change this, make it better or stuff like that or have issues with it, head over there and let me know. Uh, I know one thing I do want to do is change the font and fix the CPU reading thing which I will explain in a little bit but let's get through the setup. Okay, so we are on a light version of Raspbian, which is the easiest and the lowest resource hogging operating system that I'm be using. And I, again, I don't know what GUI I wanna use in the end, so right now I'm just sticking to default, sticking to the lightest as possible. Now, first thing you need to do is keep this up to date. So remember to update your Raspbian and fix all the configurations. On this setup, I currently have my hard drive plugged into the USB. So first thing we need to do is make sure everything is working as far as the hard drive goes. So I'm gonna list structure, dev, and I'm gonna type in SD and hit tab a couple of times and have it autocomplete. And you're gonna see that it says SDA and SDA1. That means it's detecting my hard drive, which is good. Now, the first thing I need to do is to head over to root. And if I list structure, you're gonna see a bunch of folders and you're going to see a folder called SRV all the way towards the right. And when I serve, become a server or make a NAS server or share something, I tend to put it over at SRV. You don't have to, you could do whatever directory you want, but I'm just going to leave it in SRV. So I'm going to change my directory and go over to SRV. If I list structure, it's blank, which is fine. What I want to do now is just make sudo make dir and call it share. You don't have to do this step if you're in the auto mount, which we're gonna be doing in a second anyway, but I just wanna show you, if I make a folder, it's gonna be called share. Now, like I said, we're gonna make our hard drive auto mount, so every time when it boots up, it knows to mount this hard drive. So we're gonna do sudo nano etc slash fs tab, and that's where you would add all the stuff that you want for mounting on boot. Now, the best case scenario is to use UUID, which um, we could get and do, but it's a um, bigger process just to add it in. So I'm just gonna change this over to dev.sda1, and that's our first partition. Now, I do know that I formatted this guy to ETX4. Now, if you got a hard drive that's NTFS or something like that, you're gonna have to change your thing as well. So we did create this folder called SRV share, and that's where I'm gonna head towards. Again, this will be changed to whatever your partition is, if it's NTFS or ETX, EXT3, 
mine is ETX4, EXT4. Uh, I'm going to change it to read RW. So it's read write. And I'm also going to add um, user auto with the commas and everything, zero, zero. I'm going to save that. And as soon as I do sudo mount dash A, if it doesn't print out an error, that means it mounted the drive. And you can see right now it's green and blue. It, that means it's mounted. Um, one thing I do want to ensure, I want to make sure that everybody's able to write on it. So I'm going to do ch sudo ch mod 777. I know it's 777 because it's a green background and it's blue right now, but I'm just double checking to make sure that that's going to be correct. Now you can reboot and make sure that when you boot, check back on directory to make sure it's mounted. Otherwise, we're gonna carry on to the next step, which is setting up Samba. I'm gonna do the easy version. There are more complicated ways like adding passwords and all this other stuff, but I'm gonna do sudo app install Samba right now. It's gonna fetch the list of stuff. All right, now that everything is all installed, uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is set up the share. So I'm gonna do sudo nano etc samba smb.cnf conf config, which is config. Now in here, first I wanna do is set up my globals. Now I'm gonna hit spacebar a couple of times, which why is it not doing? No, oh, there you go. Um, I'm gonna hit spacebar a couple of times and do security equals user and net bios name equals rpi nas I don't know yet now I'm gonna head all the way to the bottom and this is where I'm gonna add my share uh, I'm gonna quickly go through this I'm just gonna name this share and th there's more elegant ways to do this like adding permissions and all this other stuff I'm just gonna do the easiest possible way of getting a share working with guest enabled so first we need to know is it public yes is it browsable yes is it writable yes and path we named it SRV share okay is guest okay yes uh, create mask is going to be 0777 which means all they're allowed to write and anybody's about allowed to delete comment I'm just going to call this my pi r pi nas uh, guest account will be nobody force user to be nobody nobody's technically an account in this thing and directory mode equals 0777. I could have put that up on top, but that's fine. Control X to save, yes. Sudo system CTL restart SMBD. There's no errors and it works like that. You should be sharing right now, even on the hard drive. So what I'm gonna do is head over to my computer right now now I know the IP address of my guy because when it boots up it told me it's 192.168.100 and you see a thing called share and I have a lost and found in there I don't know why oh yeah because it's the hard drive and I'm just going to create a text file and uh, I know it works because the text file is working and I could start transferring stuff if I wanted to now if I head back over to my Pi and I do cd cd serve share and I list structure I'm gonna have a file called new text document. Now that we have our share set up and everything is working, we move on to the next thing, which is setting up our Papyrus. So before we can download the software for Papyrus, we are gonna do sudo raspi config. Now here is where we have to do advanced option and we have to, in, oh, it's not in advanced option. It's in interface option. And we have to enable our SPI. So I'm going to enable that. As well as setting up I2C, you need to enable this as well. And while you're here, might as well enable SSH and all the other stuff. So once I hit finish, my SPI is enabled and now I can move on to the next step. Now I'm going to change my directory back to 
my root or my home. And if you head over to the Papyrus website, which I'll show you right now, all right, here in the Papyrus website, if you go to their GitHub, they will have this one command called curl, blah, 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 blah. This is all you need to type in on your Raspberry Pi to get the Papyrus setup. So I'm going to do curl ssl https pi supply papyrus code pipe that into a sudo bash and here we have which one we could use you could either do both which is python 2 and python 3 my code is running off python 2 so i'm just going to leave it as default give that a second and it's going to install everything you need to get papyrus working All right, so with everything installed, it will reboot itself. And then the first thing you wanna try is to test out the Papyrus. So I'm gonna type Papyrus. And if you do a double tab, you'll actually see a bunch of commands that you could do. So I'm just gonna run Papyrus clock to make sure the screen comes on. And now that we know that the screen works, we're gonna go on to the next step, which is downloading my code and just running it. We do have to configure a little bit of information depending on what you have set up. So let's head over to our main directory, which is our home. And I'm gonna do git clone HTTPS, github.com, Nova Spirit, papyrus-nasstat. All right, so I'm gonna list structure and then change my directory to over to papyrus nas stats. Now if I'm list structure, I'm gonna have a few files there. Now, the first file is the code, which is the nas stat.py. Then I actually have a service file and the requirements. We do need to install the requirements, which is only a uh, PS util. So sudo, we do have to install this as a sudo super user because when you wanna get this running up and running for the boot of the system. Um, it will be root, so we do have to install this through sudo. So sudo pip install requirements. Oh, if we don't have pip installed, so we need to do sudo app install pip. I think it's called Python pip. There you go. Okay, now we could try running that command again by hitting up arrow for history, and then it's gonna do sudo pip install requirements. Huh, maybe I didn't create the requirements file correctly. I'll fix that in the next revision, but if you wanna do it manually, it's sudo pip install psutil. All right, to test out the script before we wanna move forward, you could actually do sudo python nasstats.py. Ah, the next problem I see right now, which I didn't even recognize, is because I don't have the full version of Raspbian installed. It doesn't have the true type fonts. So we're gonna have to install sudo app install it's ttf ms core font installer. This will install the fonts that you need for certain types of fonts that I was using. Okay, let's give this a try again. All right, it seems to be working. So let's move on to the next step, which is setting up and configuring the next step to get this booted up. So I'm gonna control C. Uh, first thing I wanna do is nano NAS stats and show you what you need to change inside. So the first two lines is what you wanna change. The mount point here would be wherever you're serving. So it's, it'll be SRV slash share. That's where the server, uh, the share is. And the network adapter, whether you plan to use uh, 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 Wi-Fi or the Ethernet. So I'm going to be using Ethernet. Will be Etho zero. If it's Wi-Fi, it'll actually be WLAN zero, like this WLAN zero. But I'm going to keep it as Etho zero. Control X, save, right to that file, and you are set. Now, in the NASA stat service, you will have to change something as well. So I'm going to nano into nasstat.service. And here you would want to change this location of where this is. Now I have it under papyrus-nasstats slash nasstat.py. And I'm gonna save this file. If you have it in another folder or another directory, you decide to move it somewhere else like to the bin or something like that, that's where you have to change the location of that. Now I'm gonna sudo cp nasstats.py service over to etc system d 
system and sudo system ctl enable nasstats.service there we have it now it's enabled and now to start it we could do sudo system ctl start nasstats now you should see your screen kicking in all right so here we have it everything's booted up and you can see that this is 103 gigabytes um i'm gonna have to fix that a little bit because the megabytes and the gigabytes is all screwed up a little bit so i might have to fix that in a later revision which probably by the time this video is out i would have that fixed uh you could also see that the uptime says 13 minutes the host and the kernel so i'm going to explain this little screen that you're looking at for one second all right so first we have the cpu bar now i do have to fix this a little bit because it's pulling the real-time cpu so sometimes it flashes on and off even though it only says like five or four percent this is the ram with the desktop it runs around like 140 megabytes without the desktop is like 45 megabytes which is great this bar is a storage you know what i'm going to do i'm going to start transferring something over so you can see this active so give it one give me one second all right there we are so now you see a cpu usage that i'm transferring the file um, uh, the ram is going a little bit up because you're transferring using resources over here you see the storage is going up i'm actually transferring a four gigabyte file over so you're going to see this move the uptime the raspberry pi and the kernel version which i might change in the future to um how many update packages you have remaining or something like that here's the, the net which is the receive and the transmit so it's receiving that's how many megabytes it is and then the ip address solely uh, i mainly made this screen because of this right here and this right here which is the net so those are the two most important factors for me as far as building this screen and i think this came out pretty well um i do have to fix some of the orientation of how the storage looks i might have to kind of centerize it later just so i could see all the text but over here you could you're going to notice that it'll automatically convert megabytes to gigabytes gigabytes to terabytes terabytes to petabytes and yeah you could see it's kind of like adjusting itself as it goes but i'm transferring files and everything's moving as it should so guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button. And if you guys got any questions, hit in the comments below. Now, there are some stuff that I still need to fix on this, I know already. But again, check back for other revisions on the GitHub. As well as when part two is out on this video, I will leave a link right here or in, down in the descriptions below. So for those of you guys who are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.